All right, three, two, one, and we're on. Okay, welcome to this video. My name is James. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be discussing the graduates or the best graduates of 2021. Now, I've written an article on my website, and we're just going to go through that very slowly. And let's uh, let's get this up on the screen. Of course, I'm very excited <laughs> to deliver this because this was super exciting to go through. One thing I've always wanted to know, right, is these people that are graduating from uni, you know, who who are the best grads, right? There's all these people that you see, okay, maybe I know this guy, oh, he's pretty good. Maybe I know this girl, you know, maybe she's not bad. But who are the, re you know, what is the highest standard possible for a graduate? You know, sometimes I'd apply for jobs and, you know, maybe I get to the interview stage or I get, you know, to almost no, almost no stage, right? You almost get the rejection letter straight away. Almost sometimes even I've had that on the same day, right? I've received rejections on the same day and I'm sitting there thinking, goodness, how have I already received this rejection? You know, I didn't, I didn't think I was that bad at uni, you know, I had extracurricular activities on my resume. I had all these other things that, you know, I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm not too bad. Surely I'll get like fairly far into this, uh, you know, at least get to the, some early stage. Uh, but that happened to me very often was when, you know, I thought I would do better and I just got pushed back straight away. And typically that was for <laughs> these really good companies. Now, when I say really good, I'm talking about, you know, your McKinsey, Bain, big consulting companies, etc. These guys are very, very competitive. And it was interesting to me for so long, uh, you know, who these people were. And finally, finally, we have some information on that. Uh, and it's been so interesting to go through this. So I've written this article. Uh, link will be in the description. But yes, let's go through it. So yeah, there's something I've always wondered, right, is what does a great graduate look like? Because there's just, you don't, you don't really see, like no one's saying to you, oh yeah, these are the people that got the job, you know. Uh, it's so hard to find out because you can think you're not bad and then you go and, you know, maybe you see some other, like, well, <laughs> let me rephrase. Once you read this, you'll see, okay, the people that are getting this stuff are the real deal. They've got pretty nice resumes, <laughs> pretty nice resumes to put it bluntly. So the way this investigation works, I actually stumbled across an article on the AFR, which is the Australian Financial Review. And pretty much what these people are is like, it's, you know, it's just the journalists for anything to do with professions. So like finance, law, commerce, whatever, anything in that sort of sector, consulting, everything, that's the AFR, right? The AFR is, is a pretty good news source, really. There's a lot of information there. A lot of the articles are pretty decent. Um, <laughs> pretty decent. Yeah, so that's where I found this article. And basically what they released was an article about the top, the graduates that got into this place called I don't really know how to say it. It's this word here. I'm going to say like Kearney or Kearney or something like that. <laughs> but that's what it is, right? And like these are the graduates that got there. They've got this article. It's got all of them in there. And this was super interesting for me to read. Um, so, you know, I thought, let's make a video. Let's make an article and we'll go through it and, and do a bit of analysis to see, you know, what's the sort of caliber that you need to get to to get these competitive jobs. So, because we have Kearney. I'm going to butcher that through the whole thing. So maybe I'll just say the consulting company. <laughs> no, uh, you know, this consulting company. Okay, this consulting company. We'll go with that. Everyone knows what I'm talking about now. It's this weird thing with a K. <laughs> okay, so, someone might be able to like tell me how to pronounce that. Anyway, this company is, is, is one of the best places to work in the world, really. Um, they get a lot of awards, a lot of things like that. It's pretty much, uh, you know, in, from my limited perspective, I would say it's similar to like McKinsey, Bain, that sort of genre of companies, right? Obviously, I haven't worked there, so I don't know for sure. But um, I would put it in that r roughly that echelon. It's fairly competitive, put it that way. Like I reckon I applied to this place twice and I got knocked back straight away. And I'm now working at a big four bank. So um, my resume isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, this is super interesting. So... The key, uh, the, the graduates, <laughs> the graduates. Okay, so what are they like, right? This is this. We'll get, we'll get to it. So yeah, I did a bit of analysis, bit of stat, bit of crunching, number crunching. So there was twelve hundred applications. Okay, one thousand two hundred applications, and ten graduates were hired. Okay, one zero ten. Okay, that means eight point eight three three percent of applicants received an offer, which means you know that's what it's like one in one hundred and twenty. 
which is not that many. <laughs> surprise, surprise, not that many. Okay, so it's like, well, you know, you've got to be pretty good. So imagine you've got 120 university grads and the people applying for this stuff are probably already not too bad. You know, the best out of 120 of them, like you're going to have a pretty decent resume and also probably, you know, be able to conduct yourself well. I mean, that's something that these sorts of things maybe don't pick up, right, is, you know, how well are you at communicating? <laughs> like, are you a nice person? Because um, that's also important. And, you know, maybe looking at someone's resume and their stats and all the things they've done doesn't really reflect, you know, can they have a conversation? Can they, you know, can they do normal things without being annoying? Can they, like, are they irritating? Do you know what I mean? These things don't get, that's not on your resume, right? So, you know, that's something to keep in mind as well as we go through this is resume obviously isn't the, the whole picture, but to someone that's a HR person, it's a, it's a pretty big part of the picture, <laughs> okay? Yeah, so let's have a look at these. So 10 graduates, the average age, 24 and a half almost. So that's a bit old, that's, that's fairly old. Uh, minimum 22 and oldest was 29. So I thought that was really interesting that the oldest is 29, like... It, it sometimes confuses me, like, older people getting grad roles, like, um, especially, like, sometimes it makes sense, right? They've gone, done a career, and they've gone back, and now they're, now they're doing a grad role. Like, I guess that makes sense. But, you know, some people that are sort of going on a, like, tangential career path, it's, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Because the grad roles are supposed to be for, like, graduates, like, that are typically younger, but... You know, nothing wrong with that, though, to be fair. Like, if I was that old and I wanted to get a good job, like, I would go straight into the grad program. No worries. So, let's get into their degrees. So, 8 out of 10 did a double degree, 5 did law, 7 did commerce or econ, and 4 did STEM. Like, I think some, one of them did maths, I think, and a couple of them did engineering. So, pretty interesting consulting. I mean, you know, law and these things. Actually, I think there was a guy that did law and engineering, but anyway, that they seem to be... Obviously, it's consulting, so you can be pretty much from a lot of different backgrounds, really. Um, half of the graduates did an internship there. Uh, six of them, yeah, this is actually pretty insane. So, six of them did two or more internships, um, in, and then it extends to eight if you include the two people that went away and worked in politics, right? So, vast majority of them have two or more internships, and we're not talking about, like, interning at Dad's, <laughs> Dad's shop on the corner, right? We're talking, like, you know... Uh, KPMG, Deloitte, etc. Consulting, or like some of them were at like um, VC firms or like Macquarie, other big banks. So you know, you know, fairly good internships by most people's standards, right? <laughs> um, it, very, very cool. And two out of ten were the president of a club at university, which you know I thought that might have been slightly higher, but you know, there you go. Pretty interesting. So obviously, we've got the the numbers, right? 10 out of 1,200 is pretty freaking low, pretty freaking low. So you've got to be pretty competitive to get into these places. Very, very competitive, which, you know, it's a good it's a good place to work. So that, that probably will happen with any place that's like a desirable spot to work. Like people are going to want to work there. It's going to be hard to get in. So 10 out of 1,200 is obviously very, very low. Yeah, one thing which we touched on earlier, the, the average age. So the average age is 24 and a half which seems to me to be fairly high. And I think that speaks to, you know, these people potentially taking longer to do their degree because they're doing it while they're studying or like they're doing post-grad or, you know, well, and especially once you extend your degree out a bit, you get more time to do internships too, right? So like these guys who are doing like one at KPMG, one at Deloitte, one at Macquarie, for example, like you kind of struggle to do that in one summer, which is typically when they are you're really going to have to sort of, you know, do, do what these guys have done. Maybe you do your undergrad, do an internship through that, and then you do postgrad, and then you do more internships because those sorts of things will get you, you know, it looks quite good on the resume, especially when you're competing with other people that either don't have an internship or they've just got one or whatever it is. Um, you know, being in there for longer, in some ways you could probably already go and get a job by that point, but if you want to get these really good ones, you know, it's maybe worth spending a bit more time in, at university just so you can be eligible for some of these opportunities. So, yeah, most of them interned at, at consulting like companies like Deloitte, KPMG, EY, etc. Um, places like Macquarie, um, different sort of tech, more tech companies and VC companies, a few random ones. Pretty cool though. Uh, and a lot of them had, you know, other extracurriculars as well. So, that brings us to... 
more or less the end of the analysis. So what's my advice? You know, what is my advice for people who would want to get in somewhere like this? You know, what, um, having, having now we know, okay, what the caliber of these people is, which is reasonably impressive, you know, what can we do about that? What is the, what is the takeaway? What is the takeaway, right? And I think it is something, yeah, you know, I guess you could call it a snowball effect. I mean, I, I really didn't coin this term. It sort of makes fairly intuitive sense, right? It's basically like, okay, let's um, let's get myself a an internship at a company and then I'll work there and then I'll use that internship to get better ones. And I guess this is the sort of scenario that you would want, the most ideal scenario would be, okay, you're in first year uni, you're getting some sort of work probably pretty much anywhere and then you're going to leverage that to get in somewhere decent and just leverage that to get in somewhere better and just keep going up the chain until you end up somewhere like this <laughs> because that's basically what these people have done, right? Is, you know, you start somewhere small, then you just keep going up and up and up and every step you go up, there's going to be less and less people there, right? Like, for example, let's say you interned at dad's company or your, you know, your dad's friend or like some random bloke that you've met on the street and you just go, hey, can I intern at your company for six weeks or whatever in your first year? Then you go to apply at EY, let's say, for an internship. You know, lots of people there have, won't really have done much. So you having that experience is going to help you and make you more likely to get it. And once you've gotten that internship, it's going to make you more likely to get the next one. And that's going to make you more likely to get more and more and more stuff, which is going to help you to get a role like this. So that is what I would say, right, is... Um, use this, yeah, get that snowball going early. So especially, it's maybe later to do if you're sort of at the end of your degree, but definitely if you're early on, you know, get as much experience as you can and just crank it, you know, get get something else, get something else and keep going up and up and up. And that will that will help you a lot if you're, if you're after these sorts of roles. One thing too is that, you know, half of the people in this job interned at the company. So, Interning at a company is also a great way to get a job at that company. So interning at Kearney <laughs> is a great way to get a job there, right? So you've got like a 50-50 chance, or not even, I don't know how many interns they got. Maybe all the interns got jobs and then half of the, the other interns were just new grads. Like that may well have happened. Maybe 100% of the interns got hired afterwards. Um, they probably would have got an offer at least. So interning somewhere is, is pretty good. Like if you intern there, there's a very high chance you end up with a job there. Especially if you do a good job and if you impress, then you know companies like this will be more than more than happy to keep you on because you already know how it works. You know you're gonna they, they've got a grad program anyway. It just makes sense for them to keep you on. So those would be my advice. Well, yeah. So obviously this stuff, the guys who are getting these roles, very very competitive, very very good resumes, right? Lots of uh, you know sort of STEM, more advanced degrees, lots of internships. It must be, you know, pretty decent people as well. <laughs> um, you know, very, very competitive. One in 120 people get this. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so what's the advice? How can you replicate this in your own life? And I would say use this snowball effect, right? Start early if possible and continually just get better and better experience and so it's easier and easier to do these sorts of things and then hopefully you get land one of these roles. And intern, intern at your company. Would pick one you want to work at, intern there, and that's going to be, if you get the internship there, that's going to be your most certain way of working there. But uh, we'll wrap the video up there. I hope you guys enjoyed. The link to this article and the link to the AFR article will be in the description if you want to read them yourself. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.